Hey everybody, Don from Don's Pinball Podcast here, coming to you from the southern regions of my home state of Wisconsin. We're on an adventure today. We're actually out on location. In the pre-COVID days of pinball, a dream was born from, from a garden shed in southern Wisconsin. A dream that turned into the pinball machine, America's most haunted. From that dream, from those embers, the smoke arose and coalesced into a cloud that rained down the birth of the creation of Spooky Pinball. Makers of such fine games, such as Alice Cooper's Nightmare Castle, Rick and Morty, Domino's Pizza Adventure, The Jetsons, Scooby-Doo, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, Looney Tunes, and game number 13. So jump right over there, right over there, the business incubator, the, the white building right there, is where it all started. Following that, there were expansions, which created now a sprawling campus rivaling Google, Epic Healthcare Systems, rivaling the, the Apple Complex, if you will, Foxconn in China. And here we are on this day in Southern Wisconsin, where their biggest expansion yet sits up on the hill. And we're gonna check it out. So join me as we hang out with our friends at the house that Spooky built, Benton, Wisconsin zone, our buddies, the Spooky Gang. Yeah, they're probably right in there. Game number 13 is probably right in there right now. We're probably not gonna see that today, but let's go have some fun. All right, folks, here we are inside the modern high-tech facility of Spooky Pinball. Within these walls, the games are made, the games are played, and the games are tested by head honcho, Mr. Bug Coburn Emery here. What's up, guy? Tested memories, pinball, and love being made in this building. How, <laughs> how cool is this place? Let's just pan around Let's here for a moment. So we can get the, the I mean, I mean look at this. Us. Everything in one production facility. No stairs to jump up and down. You don't have to worry about getting your steps in because it's kind of far from the parking lot. But yeah, let, let's walk around. Let's walk and talk. Yeah. And show me all this stuff. Look at this. Look at this line of Turner Classic Movies. No, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Still a TCM. I prefer this one. Uh, but in Ted Turner's tradition, these are colorized. All right, let's continue. Don is actually the most loyal uh, TCM customer because he still owns both his Looney Tunes and his Texas Chainsaw From my Massacre. cold, dead hands, you will get that game. I'm loving it. Multiple yeah. ramps. Look at these. Look at these orange darlings. All right. So, 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 how does this? Where do we start with this place? I think we should start where production starts, where they start putting together the play fields, they start putting together the cabinets, and it's all the way down at the very start of the production line because that just makes sense. We're nearly there. Workflow. Yeah, uh, that's genius. Is this the off-gassing boxes? Off-gassed. Lots of gases being off here <laughs> in Spooky Pinball. <laughs> So yeah, we start down here with our playfield boxes where we have a bunch of Looney Tunes sitting in here. There's a bunch of Texas chainsaws sitting in here. So They're so new. The playfield assemblers will come over, they'll grab a blank playfield. Uh, these have already been inspected before they go to the production line, but they'll still inspect it again when they pick it up. I dig it, I dig it. So they pick it up and they walk right over here to the playfield assembly area. So we get over to here where Jesse is assembling all of the physical pieces of the play field. So he's tossing on all the coils, all the light boards, all the switches, all, all the nice. lights. All the goodness. And he looks darn good while he does it, too. He sure do. I mean, <laughs> look at this. This is a snappy outfit. I, I dig it, brother. Yeah, it's Don's Pinball Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For class enough to join, much better than I did. So yeah, they're, they do all their assembly through here. And if you look around us, we're just completely surrounded by nothing but really awesome parts that are organized in these awesome clear bins and the gray bins as well, and all of our pinball life parts. But you want that to really just like What's next here? Entire bins full of targets and switches and, and the rubbers and the light bulbs, our light boards that we design here and manufacture here. I want to jump and play in those bins. I want to play in that bin. I want to pet that dog. So when the playfield assemblers get done with their assembled playfield, they actually pick it up and they set it on this nice, the playfield wire or grab an assembled playfield. They set it down like here. 
And then yeah, they, they wire it all up. They get all the coils, all the switches, all the lights, everything wired up and ready for the next station. How so, cool, we can start from right there and then boom, with wires. What's next here, guy? So after they're done wiring the play fields, they get set back up onto the rack system. And then we have our play tester slash uh, final assembly crew who will take them off of there and they put it into this amazing item here, the Squeaky Pinball Test Rig. Uh, this is uh, my favorite thing in this whole new factory is these test rigs. They're so cool. They do so many different things. As you can see, uh, they assemble the entire game out onto this test rig. But what's nice about it is the fact that you can rotate it. So if you take a look here, Drake here is working on the bottom side of the play field. He literally just rotated the rotisserie around so he could do some soldering, tweaking some things on the bottom side of that play field. And the entire fronts of these function uh, as all the same controls as an entire pinball cabinet. So all these buttons, you have your flipper buttons so you can actually play the game and flip the flippers, but you have your menu buttons, your volume buttons, your back, your start, your launch ball, all in this control panel in the front here. And yeah, every day they set a new play field on there, they build it out, they run all their tests on it, and then they actually can play full games of pinball on these test rigs, which is exactly what they were designed for. And on top of that, they have this wonderful feature of the light up feature. <laughs> Love it. Can I get one of those for my car? Yes. <laughs> Isn't that in Wayne's World or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, Benton PD would get me, I think. <laughs> So yeah, these guys are all jumping in between the games here, doing various tests, bottom side, top side. Uh, they're actually getting pretty close to the end of the day here as far as the assembly goes. I mean, you can see they've got all the plastics out, sculpts on, the ramps in. Everything's looking super nice, super sexy. Uh, it's about to get run through by Drake over there. He's gonna go through, he's gonna play all of these games, and then they're gonna get approved before they go into the official cabinet that they belong in, which uh, we can walk over and show that now. So aside from all the big stations where the people are working on like the full play fields and the test rigs, there's also a ton of assembly going on here. As you know, we do a lot of our manufacturing in-house. And uh, something really cool that's being worked on right here is the backboards for each of the games. So getting wired up, getting tested, having the plastics put on. Uh, these will be going into some Texas Chainsaw Massacres tomorrow. I can tell because the shoot is gray, not yellow. Uh, Emily here works on all of the different sculpts in the game, assembling plenty of cool things there. And uh, she, she has the pleasure of going through these bins down here of these sculpts, of uh, opening one up to just this whole bucket full of wily e. Coyotes wrapped in plastic <laughs> and meat grinder uh, mechanisms, the rockets, the, the freezer girl Pam <laughs> stuck in the freezer. So lots of really satisfying, cool organization going on that we desperately needed. This shop is so much cleaner, it's so much more organized. Everything about it is just so much better than what we had before. And uh, that's what happens when you spend 12 months designing it to be exactly what you want it to be. Well, would you look at that? I think the gang is all here. Gang's all here. Zoics. So over in this department, we have our cabinet guys who spend uh, every day, they get your cabinets decaled up put together, they start wiring them, they get the shaker installed, they get the knocker installed, they put the head on the game, and they assembled the head. And this is another really cool thing that we upgraded in this new factory that we didn't have before. And it is our cradle for the heads for them to work on. So what they do is they take the assembled head, this black head here, set it down into the, this cradle system, which we specifically built for this building. And beneath them is all of the parts that they need to go in the head. So your little board for your light kits that go in there, the knockers that go it installed to the head, uh, the lights on the back, all these things right beneath them to set in. They can work on it at a comfortable level where everything's nice and visible, easy to access. And when they're done with it, they can just pick it up and it goes right on to one of these cabinets here. So today we're the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So yeah, when they get done building these, uh, they're in this track system. At the end of the day, they literally take them and they just slide them down the system here to the next stage of quality control. There is so much quality being controlled right here. <laughs> I dig this rail and track system. Everything's on its own little cart here. Just rolling on down the line. These games, are, the play fields have been checked. The back boxes are loaded. Final assembly's happening. And then you're coming down here to the end of the line where these are, you touch each one of these, correct? 
Every single one of them. Yeah, uh, I play every single game. I check it head to toe before it goes out, but I'm not the only person doing that. We have multiple departments that handle that. Uh, so when the, those, those guys on the play testing race, they pull those play fields out, they come over, uh, they set that into a cabinet that already got its whole PC process done. So you're marrying a play field that has been completely checked and tested head to toe into a cabinet that has also been completely tested head to toe. Those get put together, and then we have a whole crew of people that follow up from it there. Uh, starting with uh, Tech Tori here, who's working on some Pinball matchmaker here. At the, Tech Tori. At the desk. I recognize you from some Facebook posts. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you tip uh, your tech on the agement uh, on, the, on the weekends. Or <laughs> we'll put the Venmo here. We'll put like, the Venmo here. Yeah. We'll, we'll add it to the bottom. Tip Tori. <laughs> she tip works Tori. Uh, every uh, nights and weekends uh, during the week. So she works till 8 p.m. during the week taking your tech calls. And then on the weekends, also Fridays, Saturdays, she follows basically the same hours as Chick-fil-A. Oh. If you have a hard time remembering it. So tip your tech who is sacrificing yeah. all of her weekends to make sure that and you... And she's, she's doing it all without an indoor play area either. So... So after they give the play fields over here and everything gets hooked up, Tech Tori is actually the first person to go through them at that point, uh, making sure everything's neat, clean, working. She has a large, large checklist that she goes through uh, head to toe every single game. And then another person follows her and then I follow her after that and I play it. Once it gets my stamp of approval, the game actually sits overnight because it's very important that you let a game sit overnight. It's like a, a gremlins thing or something. But uh, you let the game sit overnight and then another person comes in in the morning and they play each of them again. They check everything head to toe again and then it is okay to go out the door and into a box. So this area right now, these are Tori's games for 2K, uh, going through these Looney Tunes, these Texas Chainsaws. Some days it's all of one or the other. Some days it's mixed up. I like a day that it's mixed up. I like getting a flavor of everything in my day. But uh, yeah, going through these, testing everything, hitting the checklists and uh, overall doing our very best to make sure that your quality experience is what you could dream of. So after uh, all the QC processes are done over there, the game gets wheeled over to our boxing department where they add all of these fun things like your apron magnets and your interior graphics, the armor on the game, the finishing touches to a spooky game that just really make it look like a spooky game. Uh, your back glass gets put in. And once they're done with all that, the game's all cleaned up. Guess what? Another QC check, someone goes through it head to toe, checking every aspect of it before the head officially gets folded down and it gets set onto a pallet and then into a box it goes. So after it goes into the boxes and they're palleted up, they're ready to go to you, they get uh, taken over here by the pallet jack. And then we have this whole sea of games right here that are ready to get shipped out to their customers. Uh, this one's going over to the UK actually, Pinball Heaven. Thank you for your support. This one, check this out. This is actually the Looney Tunes artist game. This is his personal Looney Tunes. Brad Duke, guy behind all the artwork on Looney Tunes. His game is sitting in a box, it's ready for him. I think he's in like Japan right now or something. So waiting for him to get back. Another game for Pinball Heaven, great distributor. And uh, yeah, just this whole sea of machines ready to go out the door, ready to go to you, or ready to go in this giant green trailer and get taken to a show like Pinball Expo that's coming up or Pinball on the Beach this February which we will be at, so, yeah. So, John, what do you think of our new factory? Dude, this place is nuts. I mean, I can't think of anything else you would want in a production line. I, I know one thing you don't want is that staircases. Where you no have more to, staircases. We have it's to lug these things upstairs, downstairs. Yeah. None of that no more. I mean, it was great for everyone's shoulders. They all had super jacked shoulders. But, uh, yeah, no, no more carrying play fields up and down stairs. No more different buildings between uh, processes for, like, cabinets and play field assembly, anything like that. Uh, all on one dual-sided line where everything is kept under a very watchful eye right next to each other, apartments this, right next to each other. This has to save so much time from like each little step. Yeah, it's it, it, the workflow improvements were literally immediate. I mean, various departments literally increasing 15 to 20 minutes each day, which allows you to do more QC because now you have more time to do those things. So it, it's every aspect of it has been a major, major improvement. We're absolutely loving it. It, um, it seems like the longest time period ever is waiting for a game that you've ordered, yeah. waiting to get it. So anything that expeditiously... Yes expediates that expeditiously expediates it will be exceptionally <laughs> appreciated so 
And then also it's just more visually, everything about it's more visually appealing, like this wall of play fields that we get to stare at each and every day behind us, just some places, down the way. Some places they end the tour with the wall of microwaves. We got a, a wall of the play fields. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with microwave stores. Slightly less radiation. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, but they're going from, from populated you ever put a pinball in a microwave? to wired. I know what I'm doing in your break room before I leave. <laughs> it's definitely a warm one out here in Wisconsin. But winter's right around the corner. And as the fall sets in and we transition to the snow time, not only are we going to switch our tires out for the snow tires, we're also going to get our pre-order deposits ready. Because I think they're cooking up something pretty cool back in those sheds. Back in those Wisconsin sheds. I really, I really want to see what's going on. A gigantic thank you to Bug Corwin Emery for hosting me down there at the Spooky Compound. And also to Luke and the rest of the incredible team there. Tori in tech support. Luke Peters on code. Um, everybody, including the distributor network that is serving to get these games out to the people. I can't wait for the release of the next game now that the production is like on super steroids. But hopefully without... The painful side effects. If you want to get yourself a game, check them out at SpookyPinball.com. Come down to Pinball at the Beach in St. Petersburg, Florida in February for the first public debut of their next game. Or reach out to a local distributor. Jeff at MadPinball.com is who I use. Uh, but go out through the network and get yourself one of these quality built, affordable, fun games for your home location. Arcade pizza parlor. Put it in your ex-wife's house. Anywhere you want. Uh, they got a flavor for everybody. So thanks again. And I can't wait to come back 